folks, today we're going to be talking about some deep waterways. Folks, stick this in. This is going to help us create more stronger, more focused water waves. Now, when I turn on this wind blower, what do you think is going to happen? Three, two, one. Look at this crazy thing. What is this? This is a deep water wave. It's created by this crazy wind blower. And you can see that these waves are moving very fast and we can find their velocity with a mathematical equation. To find the velocity of a deep water wave, we have to check if it's actually a deep water wave. A deep water wave has a depth that's greater than half of the wavelength. That means the depth is greater than 50% of however long the wavelength is. Now let's increase the intensity of this wind blower. Now you might be thinking, why am I even using a wind blower? Is this even realistic? Well, as a matter of fact, it is. If you're in the ocean, the Pacific Ocean or the Atlantic Ocean, you've got crazy heavy winds, maybe 20 knots, that are pushing on the water and that are making the waves deform and inducing some transverse waves into the water. And so this is a simulation of that. This wind blower is an exact representation of the wind you might find in the Pacific or Atlantic Ocean. Now, as an increase in intensity, you're going to see some crazy water waves being generated. Now, you might think, hey, this looks just like a tsunami, but tsunamis are actually shallow water waves. Why? Well, their depth is actually less than 5% of their wavelength, which we covered in the last video, if you haven't seen that already. So in this case, we're looking at some wind-generated waves, which are a perfect example of deep water waves, because their depth is, as a matter of fact, greater than half of their wavelength. Folks, it's time for some equations. The velocity of a deep water wave is strictly a function of its wavelength. There's other formulas out there, but the simplest one is simply a function of lambda, the wavelength. And the velocity is proportional to lambda, so a longer wave means a faster one. And so we can say that the velocity of a wave, a deep water wave, is the square root of g, the gravitational acceleration, over 2 pi times lambda, the wavelength. Folks, now that you understand the equation for the velocity of deep water waves, you can appreciate them even more. For instance, you learn that the wavelength of a deep water wave is directly proportional to its velocity. So if the wavelength increases, so does the velocity. And so a large wave travels faster than a small one if they're the same frequency. And it's only noticeable when the wave's steepness, k, is large. But here's another thing. You've also learned that deep water waves are produced not by the earth, but by the wind, as opposed to shallow water waves, which are produced by the earth's uh, movement of the plate tectonics, which can create tsunamis. And deep water waves, as you've learned, are water waves in which the depth of the water is actually greater than 50% of the wavelength, as opposed to shallow water waves where the depth of the water is less than 5% of the wavelength. And so, folks, those are the three takeaways from today's episode. Hopefully, you learned a little bit. Thanks for watching this episode. We'll check you out next time.